Hello and welcome to Paint Shop Pro Basics 8. Um, today I'm going to be telling you about swatches. Before I begin, I want to apologize, however, because this is essentially a makeup video. I told you in version 7, I not version 7, episode 7, that we were done with the materials palette. I taught you about textures. We were done. That's not so. I, I deeply regret. I, I mean, Essentially, I lied to you on two levels even. I told you we were going to go over swatches, and then I never went over swatches, announcing the very last materials palette video. It's just, I feel pathetic and ridiculous. So I hope you'll accept my apologies with this makeup video, version 8, not version 8, episode 8. Oh, I need to get some sleep. Anyway, I, I just thought of this, and I have to make it for you now, and we're going to get to this quickly. A swatch represented by this third tab here on the materials palette. A swatch is essentially uh, settings. It's settings for colors, gradients, textures, and patterns. So you can save everything that you've, you know, ma perfectly mapped out. If you have like, if you're drawing something and you had the perfect skin color and you weren't paying attention to the red, green, and blue values, you weren't paying attention to the angle or the um, scale of a screen tone on you know, the clothing of a character, if you just need to have a very specific color, a very specific pattern, anything, you know, if, unless you're memorizing that information, you're going to lose it. And what's worse is that even if you do memorize, you know, you're going to have to spend time just recreating that color, that texture, that gradient, whatever it is you want, just so that you can use it again. Well, that's where swatches come in. That's the power of the swatch. It's all that information that you perfectly set up at one point without paying too much attention if you didn't want to, and you can save it for later use. That's the whole big thing. We can save it for later use. If you click in the swatches tab here, you'll see a number of little swatches. They'll probably be grouped closer or farther apart, depending on the size of the box itself. But uh, I think it defaults to showing you colors and gradients and one pattern. <laughs> you can control which ones are shown by Clicking here, you can go to colors. I'll only show you the colors. You can show only the gradients. And you can show only the patterns. So it'll show all. Uh, when you have more than is currently viewable, the, these two triangles will light up and you can scroll through the list. You can hit the create new swatch. Now, create new swatch will open up your materials dialog properties with all of the current settings that are inside. Uh, your foreground and stroke property. So if I click New Swatch, it'll ask me for a name. I'm going to call this uh, Tutorial 8. It brings up our materials properties. As our current, we hit OK, and that is saved right there, currently selected. It is saved to our swatches. So anytime we want to pick this color ever again, and I don't know why you would because it's an ugly color, but if you ever wanted to pick that again, you would just click it, and it sets it to the foreground. So if I wanted blue, I got my blue. If I wanted the zebra skin, I got my zebra skin. Gradient, whatever I want. Let's go back to the color we had. Now, you can edit swatches by double-clicking, It'll bring up the materials, and you can set the information for the swatch. Once you have it set, uh, for example, we're going to go a little more red. Hit OK. Our swatch has been edited. We are now ready to go. So if I click on that, you'll see it brings it up. You can delete swatches. If you don't want a swatch anymore, if you're only using it for one uh project and you aren't going to use it again, or at least you don't think you're going to use it again, you can just come over here and you can hit delete. It'll ask you if you're sure. We'll hit yes. All right. Now, 
we've also got this, which is more options. You can do new swatch. You can edit the swatch. You can rename the swatch. You can delete the swatch. You can change how you view. You know, I showed you that one button shortcut that does this exact same thing. Sort by. Currently, everything is sorted by the style. It has all the colors first, then the gradients, then the textures. But you can also sort it by name, which will then just reorganize everything to match perfectly with the name. You can get small, medium, or large thumbnails of the color. These are just uh, the visual representations of what the swatch actually is. Now, if you want to, you know, let's say that you don't want to use this palette to create your swatch. If you just click in here, there's this little button down here called Add to Swatches. If you click that, it'll create a new swatch. You type in the name. I'll hit Cancel for now. And it will create a new swatch from inside there. One last thing is that you can actually set the background and fill properties by right-clicking on a swatch. So you're not restricted to only left-clicking and getting the foreground. You can right-click and get any sort of thing you don't want there. And we will leave it at that. All right. That is it for swatches. I fulfilled my promise and made up from a mistake. Uh, thank you very much for your time.